Hey, Steve. Hey, Paul. Here we are on a Sunday evening on a holiday weekend talking about Sphinx. Yeah, we need to get lives, huh? <laughs> we need to get a little more variety in our lives. But in this case, it's something you and I were both really interested in. Steve, you do a lot of open source documentation stuff. It's how I know you through Pyramid and the Pyramid Docs. We were talking about Autodoc. We were talking about type hints. And then we were talking about something that surprised both of us, the topic of this little chit chat, generating links to your classes in your documentation. We didn't know we could do that, right? That's news to me. Yeah, all right. So let's walk through this. And what I have is a site with Sphinx Auto Build running so that as I make some changes, and save it will run sphinx um, updated in the background and then tell the browser to update i've got a little browser widget running in my ide and pycharm and so we're going to show a couple of things uh, one quick note uh, sphinx doesn't automatically rebuild when you edit the python code only your restructured text or markdown so you'll see us flip back over to the markdown files. So let's start in the kind of entry point in my Sphinx configuration file. And Steve, these are a few things that you know about. Um, Autodoc is something that you have to wire in. It ships with Sphinx, right? Correct. But you have to go yep. into the comp file and turn it on. Is that right? Yep. And then this Napoleon thing, what is it? That makes it, um, it gives you a, a nice uh, format for entering in um, type ins and uh, or your arguments and um, uh, the arguments and, and a description for them as well as um, any other information like right. uh, the type. So in your Python code in the doc strings, it lets you have a standard format for the doc string for your arguments and return values. And when it combined with this last one, another extension to Autodoc for type hints gives you a really convenient way to express uh, the types of your arguments and return values. Does that sound right? Exactly. In a very clean way. Okay. So what I'll do is I will show you the Python code first. All right. And I've got a data class. Data classes have fields. Fields have types. This data class has a method called add guardians, which takes a sequence of guardians. This is my code. I want it into my docs, Steve. That means autodoc, right? Yep. And then I've got a nicely formatted doc string using the Google doc string style and Napoleon, Steve, what does that mean? It means you can actually make sense of your, <laughs> of your arguments. Just with a, a nice little key uh, and a description. Um, yeah. Yeah, so Steve just selected first name to give extra information about that field that we can't easily tack on down here in the code. So what does this look like? Well, what we got to do is we got to go to a page in my docs. This is in Markdown, so I'm using Mist. And we have to use this auto class directive, point it at player, give it some configuration. Steve, this is the thing that generates all of the documentation for the code, right? Yep. And it, it then takes in the um, Napoleon for Google style doc strings. It takes in the auto doc type hints, blah, blah, blah. Is that right? Yeah, from your uh, Python source files, right? One place and it gets there you order, go. written out everywhere. Yep. And we'll see a little bit of magic on that in just a second. So here's what the rendered docs look like. It's got the narrative and then it's got the code for player and the arguments that it takes. And because I put in the Google style doc string a little bit about first name, it pulled in the STR. Now let's go back and look. Oop. In this Google style doc string, I didn't put the STR. And Steve, I think you got a, an opinion about this. This is cool so because you don't repeat yourself, right? Exactly. You know, um, if you ever have, usually what Python developers do is that they'll fiddle around with the types in their code and they'll forget to update it in their 
dock stream. Right. This, with that extension, um, the auto dock type ins, Sphinx auto dock type ins, this happens automatically. You don't ever need to put the type Indeed. in your ARG, in your dock stream. And anymore. they don't get out of date. Yep. So lovely. So now on to the magic part that Steve and I were surprised about. You see that Guardians is an iterable of Guardian, and that is a clickable link. And you click on it, and you go to the docs page in your API docs for Guardian. How did that get generated? I had a Guardian.md page, which had this same autodoc thing, and this created what Sphinx calls a role, which is kind of a symbol that can be linked to. Yep. And Autodoc generated a link to that role so I could click on it, jump to the docs. And Steve, that's good for your docs users because they don't lose context when they're trying to figure out, oh, what does this uh, class or method actually do? It's a click away. Indeed. And you don't want to have to manually do all of that linking yourself especially in your Python code. No, thank you. Now, we also got in the doc string this list of guardians. Now, what's that about? Let's go to the player. Let's go to the doc string, that line. And I've got this restructured text thing, which is pretty familiar to people who know restructured text. I'm doing a link. I'm giving some manual link text to a role. But this role comes from Autodoc. Is that right? Yep. So even down here is auto an auto generated link to Guardian, but up here is a manual generated link in my doc string. I wrote that link, right? Yeah. And that can be handy to you, Steve, when you're you're writing narrative, and you don't want to put it over in the Markdown file. You want it in the doc string, right? Right. So one last example of how we can see that thing in action. I'm going to go to uh, actually an API index. And Steve and I were talking about this in our rehearsal. I really fumbled this one <laughs> uh, because I was given the restructured text format of it. But if I go to Autodoc linking and then the API page, you'll see the concept of old habits is a link to the Guardian. What generated that? This whole thing about creating linkable, clickable links to your code can happen over in your narrative as well. And so this is the missed markdown syntax for generating to a class at that location. And then I put in some link text. Yep. Uh we could also simplify it if you don't want to have a arbitrary name for your link, old habits, just get rid of that and just boom, there you go. And then I'll go back to that. On your guardian page, uh, your narrative guardian, I think. And there we go. We've let it generate the symbol name, the full path to the symbol. Yeah. So Steve, that's pretty cool. One last cool aspect of this uh, is these roles that get generated for your symbol. They go into InterSphinx. What is InterSphinx and why should we give a bleep? Um, what it allows you to do is to um, use the same type of syntax um, for linking an object from a remote set of documentation. The most common thing that I use this for is linking to the Python standard library documentation. Um, and it makes it super easy for developers to, uh, if they don't understand a concept in Python, there's the link. Click that. Have fun. I'm writing docs and I can link to symbols as if they were local, but they're actually remote. And if they reorganize their path, if they change the title of the thing I'm linking to, I don't have to care. They're doing all the work for me. And if I link to something that later gets deleted or I give a typo, Sphinx will warn me, right? Exactly. So you can always maintain good consistency. 
All right, we're going to wrap up on that. But Steve, you're in the middle of a big documentation project that we might talk about in some future video. What is it? Yeah, so uh, the Plone, uh, Plone is a content management system, something uh, like <laughs> something like uh, like Django, but uh, with you know huge amounts of security and so forth. Anyway, uh, we're working on um, updating the documentation uh, for the upcoming release of Plone Six, and it's a huge project where we're working across multiple repositories. Um, and we have some really cool tics, uh, tips and tricks about how to manage all those things and auto automatically build all of the documentation across all those repos. It Super sounds exciting. like you're doing a combination of improving the docs and improving the lives of the docs writers. And just the whole product. Yeah. You know, it, when you have, uh, when you have multiple add-ons and plugins and extensions, that's really hard to manage. Yeah. But if you have a good way of automating it, it gets done. Yeah. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Okay. We'll wrap it up there. The life of a doc writer, Steve Piercy. Thanks so much for joining us. See you in a couple of weeks for the next one. All right. Thank you, Paul. Have a great right. weekend. Bye.